welcome to Culture of Pain. In this episode, we're going to take a look at what's caught our eye in the miniatures world over the last few weeks. For our main topic, we're going to take a look at some small producers that just make your hobby life that much better. And we'll close out the show taking a look at what our hashtag paint cultists have been up to. Now, Culture of Paint is aimed at a mature audience. We might use explicit language and discuss adult themes. Now, let's talk about paint. And we're back in. The chat's there. The camera's on. I sound like I'm in a warehouse. Um, you two <laughs> lads are there. We're good to go. Right. Hello, everyone. I'm Henry, and joining me this evening are Matt and Rich. How are you, gents? Very well, thank you. How are you? Same. I'm good, mate. I'm very, very glad to be back doing this. It's been mm. much too much of a hiatus. I think a combo of, uh, of Monte San Savino burnout and every single blessing from Nurgle you can imagine up and um, has been busy yeah it's been it's been rough but it's lovely to see you two again and lovely to see the chat again we've got some familiar names in there and some new ones which is wicked so let's get this uh get this all rolling again get that momentum going and talk about all sorts of things to do with paint so as usual I've forgotten to click on the link that shows me what we'll actually be looking at <laughs> so I'll just pad until I can figure out where it is, uh, whilst also simultaneously trying to close close the stream. Let me put um, it in the chat. Matt, what's uh, <laughs> what's first up? <laughs> so first up is have a look. I've got them. No, it's not me. Oh, it's me. Right. It's me. Um, I. Oh, you know, Craftworld Studios have been around a long time and I've met them. They're the loveliest people. Mm. And I've been aware, aware of their painting style for a very long time. But there's just something about it at the moment. It's just speaking to me. Um, I think probably the way that I paint has changed quite a lot lately. Um, in that I used to kind of, I think I used to kind of ad ad adhere a bit more to the look at these super neat hi edge highlights and I would try and be as neat as possible with stuff. Whereas I'm actually in my own painting, I'm really enjoying really enjoying nmm for the first time possibly ever which is wow. a new and scary experience big um and i know right uh not enjoying metallics and just that this sort of more artistic loose rough painting painting Ex -ex i think expression -istic? yes expression something like that whatever the word is um and also uh love beast men uh i think this this kind of nails how i see them in my head a lot darker a lot meaner than you would our sort Mate, of typical. It's, it's got to be one of my biggest disappointments is how how cool the Beastman could be. And you yeah. look, you think back at the artwork we got in the sort of fifth, sixth, seventh edition, eighth edition, even fantasy uh, yeah. army books. You had like Adrian Smith stuff in there, Carl Kapinski stuff in there, stuff, and it was just horrible. Um, yeah. And we switched over to Sigmar okay fine whatever maybe we'll start seeing cool models and then i wondered oh maybe they'll they'll go the route of it's not just goats you know maybe we'll mm. we'll see other weird gribblies and, and beasts and this that, and the other and it's just gone it's gone like comic relief you know <laughs> yeah the thing is the weird thing is, i i like that about the age of sigma that it feels like a high fantasy mm. but i think that, that works really for specific factions so things like the new versions of elves um, and then the new Sigmarines and all that kind of almost looks a bit like Zelda high fantasy. Mm. I really like that for those factions. But for me, like dark fantasy is almost like the Magic the Gathering sort of artwork, like mm. proper mm. dark fantasy based stuff. And for me, Beastmen always sat very much in that in that category. And this kind of just really speaks to me in that in that way i love how dark it is and i love the way that it's been it's painted it's a really cool model as well is it just the pair of them Crawford studio yeah that, that yeah. couple Marco really and... fuck i can't remember a name they're very prolific aren't they i've been seeing a lot more of their stuff recently yeah they are yeah been around they're for very so quick long. Mm. they have been around haven't they for ages um yeah. it's very cool it's got big um big urukai vibes as well yeah that's what I, that that kind of it looks like he, they've they've made that armor and the weapon themselves. It's mm. it's not cartoony. They don't have overly bulging muscles. They're if you like not to rag on GW, but if you put that next to like one of the big centaur, not centaur, what they're called, 
Um, the Minotaur type thing. Minotaur, yeah. You put yeah. that next to one of the Minotaurs and it's like, oh. It's very different now, isn't it? Very, although I'm assuming this is a resin model. I believe so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. But yeah, that's why it, might be, it was cool. STL of it as well from uh, Beast Beastarium Miniatures. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Also, they got some you... really good, really cool, quite original stuff on there. I don't know if you do this either, but this this is a bit weird. Depending on what time of the year it is, depends what I'm into. Hundred percent, right? So during 100%, the summer, yeah. So when it's when it's summer and it's bright and sunny, I'm like AOS, fantasy, <laughs> elves, light. And now it's winter and dark. I'm like Beastmen, right. Krieg, yeah, all all the dark, <laughs> horrible, wintry, cold stuff. You're an artistic soul, mate. You, yes, you've got that. You, you've got that in you. It's uh, oh, mate. Yeah. I completely, uh, I completely understand that. Um, if there's if there's a storm on outside, I'm doing something with space walls every time. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, right. So what's up next, Matt? Next up is. Oh, no. and I think also <laughs> Andy's pick. <laughs> I mean, if I was to guess, it probably would. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, now we saw this, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And I, I assume it has really taken a lot of people aback. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, yeah, it's very good. It's the 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 wool in the lapels on the the jacket. It just they mm -hmm. feel warm. <laughs> like you just imagine uh, yourself the, in that. The, pa the pattern on the the jumper. Because it's annoying because like when you see it in real life, you're like, oh, yeah, that's a pattern that he's painted. And then you see a video of it and you go, yep, I get it. It's still a pattern you've painted. <laughs> and then you look at it on this and you're like, how have you done that? Wait, hold on. I know how you've done that. Wait, how have you done that? Ah, it's, it's mad, right? I mean, Mark, Mark Masklands has been at, at or near the summit of, of miniatures painting now for 15 years, mm. maybe. Touch longer, maybe even unrivaled um, in skin, right? But I think, as we've spoken about in other episodes, right? There are a lot more people now that 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 top one percent has got yeah. bigger because yeah. the whole the whole pool has got bigger, right? But there's yeah, more absolutely. people now there, so to, to truly stand out is quite unusual now. Yeah. Um, and particularly, I think if you're just going to paint a model out of the box. Right, so all you're relying on is your your paintwork. It's mm. nothing. Yeah, you know, there's nothing else. Um, and for Mark to sort of produce this, it's like that. Do you remember that that scene he did a year or so ago? The um, it's like, uh, it feels very nautical. It's like the the like the pirate, mermaid and the uh, pirate, the mermaid and all. Yeah, like those two bits really do feel like. Oh yeah, he's still, <laughs> you know, he's still that step above so yeah. many. Mark, Mark's one of the the. The few painters that I think really elevates models. I think some models elevate painters. I think some things lend, some models help you out. But I think Mark is one of the very few painters that I would put on the list of no matter what model he picks up. He could, you could give Mark what would subject, you know, objectively a bad miniature, as in it's not composed very well, it's not been created very well. You could give him something that was not great and he would make it look really yeah. good. Mm. I think so. I think so. And he's just, yeah, he's, he's, he's the best at what he does, isn't he? Yeah. You could, you, yeah. like Mark is one of those artists who I guess is on the way to what you'd consider a master. If you look at it from a traditional artwork point of view, right. Mm. So, you know, in that his he has a style, he has a body of work and he has a lot of people that want to emulate him and, and paint in his yeah. style. Yet he's still, yeah. I I think the best at at it. I think every time yeah, I think so. a new project comes out from him, there's just some, there's just another level that he's gone beyond. Yeah, and it's yeah. I mean, I, I love this one. It's nice to see, like it just it's just a lumberjack, <laughs> like, but it's got a nice woolly coat on and a nice like. And cotton. this is one of Mark's own miniatures, right? Yeah, so he's he produced this. So Alejandro's sculpted, sculpted, he's, sculpted he's produced it, it yeah. and yeah, yeah. Um, he's yeah. done a sixty-hour. Uh, there's a video that you can buy we, when you buy the miniature. There's like a sixty-hour mm. tutorial video on it as well, and it just goes into mm. detail of everything, which is really cool. Fantastic, yeah. um, great model. 
who's so I just saw someone say in the chat matt matt cooper in the chat hang on are you live i don't know matt you're um but you're in the chat and you're talking but, um, <laughs> i don't know what you mean by are you live i, I hope saying, you're have i hope you're well life. oh yeah that would make more sense wouldn't it <laughs> um there we go uh here we go lots of familiar names. at the top of his game yet still innovating yeah i think that's a really good way of putting it forbes miniature world he's um it's just exciting right to see mm. what he's what to think of what 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 we in 12 months time what's the next mark piece gonna be yeah. Yeah. he's got his uh, it's pretty quick as well i i always feel, i guess it's we spoke about this before right i i wonder if it's because mark does so many box arts that it feels mm. like you see nothing from him for ages, mm. and then it's like bam, bam, bam. Yeah, he's just doing it, but then it's held for whatever reason, yeah. and then they all come <laughs> out very rapidly, and then he goes to shows, and he doesn't tend to have all that many pieces with him because he does it all for box arts. If he could actually get hold of all of his box arts and bring them to the shows, he would just <laughs> absolutely... I mean, he does really well anyway, but... Yeah, yeah. No space at Monty. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, and also that... the nicest guy as well which is yeah. great he's, he's great really to great. chat to it's good and he has that um uh his academy now with the studio in spain mm. the, the the teaching academy that he does it's <laughs> really cool we had our first ever international tour as cult of paint we brought mark along he was teaching on that and he was um yeah a pleasure um and i know the guy's really loved uh, and girls loved his class that he was doing uh dave colwell was on that out in oz first time yeah. i met dave as well and look where he's now got to yeah that's uh, something that's pretty, pretty <laughs> exciting eh? um right what's up after this handsome fellow so this was one of your ones ah so this this i was gonna do this to make andy feel a bit uncomfortable um which i'm not sure if that's possible but you know i thought it was gonna be <laughs> um, but He's working on some Eldar at the minute. And, you know, we chat about oh, how there's certain models that suit certain painters and things like that. And obviously, you know, I'm close to Andy from a work point of view. We, we talk about what we're going to do, what we enjoy doing. And he's been banging on about doing Eldar since I've ever met him. He's tried to do it multiple times, a couple of Samhain uh, projects. They never go anywhere for, for various understandable reasons. And the other week I was like, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. Do I do Samhan or do I do All Sway? And I was like, well, do Samhan because we haven't done a tutorial for that yet. So get, get them done <laughs> and it'll be good. And he goes, yeah, 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 okay. And then comes back with, okay, I've painted these All Sway up. It's like, <laughs> well, they do look great. <laughs> so um, I'm just pleased for him. It's just, it's nice when you see a mate really enjoying their painting. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think his, stu his style really suits really really suits Zelda. it does uh, you know and and i i really hope he gets sees this project through um i saw a, a wonderful eldar army on on twitter earlier this week and it was just you know it was painted well but it was just this it's the composition of it it's the different colors you can have with the aspect warriors it's the mm. the range mm. you've got of of silhouettes and, and sizes it's a, a the, the eldar and the the new guard release that we've, we've got or we're getting i think those things have been almost perfect hmm. those two reimaginings it, it there's there's been it's so much of it's familiar it's just better than, hmm. than it was before um so it's been it's been a i mean this isn't the year in review episode but it's been a hell of a year for, for that mm -hmm. sort of thing um so yeah this is one of my picks and i'm really i'm really hoping he's uh he's going to keep it going he's doing it over on our patreon at the minute and i think i think as long as we keep encouraging him yeah, I think I think we will. It's like you said, it's great to see him enjoying uh, his painting as much as he is. And I agree with you that it absolutely suits his style, mm. his color schemes. You know, if you look at that model, is basically Andy in a model <laughs> form. You know, um, yeah, right. So yeah, no, it's really good to see him really enjoying himself and and getting some good brush time in. So I hope. Uh, yeah, and I can't wait to shoot them all with my Space Marines nice i mean i can't wait to just upset him with all my dwarves so. yeah that's really that will upset him a lot i'll be shooting him with blood angels so he won't mind that no nah, he won't mind that no but if you if you wipe him with yeah. little dwarf like little hairy dwarf, oh my god it'd be perfect he cut it won't be yeah so <coughs> good times good work good times right uh what's up next <laughs> oh ah, so. 
amazing, I think, anyway. <laughs> oh, Absolutely cool. amazing. They're huge. They are massive. Well, they're, massive. they're about, about massive. the size of your fist. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I think there's a couple of days left on this Kickstarter. Yeah. It's these little, um, oh my God, my mind's gone blank now. It's these little mushrooms anyway. Oh God, that's really bad. I've forgotten the name of them now. That's really, really bad. I look at this, this Kickstarter like every day. Um, it's about six miniatures on there. But it's just, I mean, not only do I think the, I think the paint works fab, like really, really fab. Like I hadn't seen this sort of thing before. And I don't know whether that's because of the subject. I don't know whether that's because of the size. Um, but there's just, I, I need these Pilgrims. in my life. Pilgrims, thank you. I need these mm-hmm. in my life on my shelf. Um, they're very you. Oh, mate, they're just, every single one of them is just, I can't wait. Very, very rarely do I see a larger scale miniature that I want to paint. I see loads that I like the look of and I appreciate mm, I know as a mean, bit yeah. of art. Mm. But there's not that many that make me go, oh, God, I've got to find some time to get some paint on that. There was these and there was that miniature we featured a few weeks back um, that Nordlist are doing uh, from a from an old Scandinavian bit of folk art. Um, mm. And it's just uh, it's just wonderful. So, yeah, it's on Kickstarter at the minute. Um, we'll put the link to all of these accounts and anything like the Kickstarters, as usual, down in the description. Um, but if this tickles your <laughs> mushroom, then uh, then go and check it out because there's there's I say there's a ton mm. more like it. I like um, the, uh, the little mouse that he did. The other yeah, day. yeah. The yeah, massive yeah. ears. Yeah. Zabba is one of those painters in the last maybe four or five years. He kind of came out of absolutely nowhere. I think we featured him a couple of times recently, haven't we? On like a Yeah. Yeah. And then he's 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 killing it. Like he did there's a few different shows that he did and he entered um some really great stuff. He's got a very, very distinct style, you know, switching from like the the, the thing hanging around his belt, that really, really textured work to this most insanely smooth skin and you know, he's, he's great and there are a lot of them but I couldn't believe how big they were because I'd seen pictures yeah. of it and then I saw it in real life and I was like fucking yeah. it's massive you're getting, you're getting your money's worth of too of right right um, but it's just exciting right to think like I think as well like I know how I'd approach painting it That's sometimes good. I see those larger scale models and I get intimidated like properly intimidated yeah like where'd not, you start not because of my technical ability because I'm fairly confident in that it's it's the where the hell do you start process like, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I, used to, I used to get that with um, historical stuff if I was doing like a historical tank you'd see like people that would produce these amazing really really detailed weathered 135 scale tanks and they're massive you're like where the fuck do you start yeah but you just you know I think it just comes with practice mm-hmm. doesn't it exactly um, so yeah just super cool um, so yeah that was my two two picks very cool. A little extra pick, which means we're on to the main topic. If we haven't got a meme, we don't have a meme, we haven't had a meme no. for a while. We haven't. It's been ages since we've been. Can we? I'm, I'm, put, I'm putting a request out to all our listeners, watchers, friends, cultists. Send us some good memes. <laughs> I, I send them I directly to Rich, please. Send, that's fine. Send them to me. I haven't seen a good Warhammer meme. I was going to say it's been a little while. I've sent some, but like, I don't think you could put them online. <laughs> I think allow it, mate. I think I think my favourite though are when when they get Photoshop happy and they start yeah. putting the miniatures in. when it's just the generic meme with a bit of Warhammer yeah. in it. Yeah, it's it's funny, but it's, it's low effort. Yeah. Um, but when I see Abaddon versus um, Gilliman playing tennis, you That's know good. that kind of thing is yeah, it's what I'm here for. Yeah. Um, oh, someone's just saying. Uh, Dave Colwell did a, an autark as well. Yeah, he did, which was frigging cool. Uh, this yeah, orange he did. Um, yeah, that was very close to featuring as my pick as well. Um, so uh, yeah, obviously you, you all know how much you all know how much we love Dave. Um, so I'm sure we'll be featuring him plenty. Um, right. So the main topic. So the idea for this was born really out of the idea that this time of year, a lot of people like to buy gifts. For people this time of year. We are also, I think sometimes hobbyists can be quite difficult to buy for, um, partly because you kind of know what you want a lot of the time, I think. Um, it's not necessarily don't send, you know, Nana into the, the games workshop to ask for 
all the incredible things that they get asked for. <laughs> um, and they yeah. get upsold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Oh, no. um, you need all but I paints. think as well, it was, it was this idea that there are a lot of small producers, whether that be of miniatures, whether that be of things to paint your miniatures with, whether that's wish or whatever. There's a lot of them out there that would really, really benefit from your support, especially at this time of year. Um, and we just wanted to champion a few of them. Now, these are all ones that we use and are sort of our favourites. It's by no means an exhaustive list, and then, and it will be it will be UK centric. We've got a few internationals in there, but it will be UK centric because that's where we are, um, and it's and that's what we use. And unfortunately, given what's happened the last few years, it's a little trickier now to get things from 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 all over the place so you know uk producers are are really important to us over here um so yeah we just want to sort of go through a few of them if you've got some in the uh, the chat you know that you really love and you want to shout um drop them in there and we'll make sure that we uh we do it in fact someone's just saying there do people ever paint models as gifts for people i love seeing it when people do that Absolutely. it's a nice way yeah it's a nice thing to do i think it's, do you remember like sometimes you'd see in white dwarf one of the sculptors would like just sculpt a one-off miniature for a mate in the heavy metal team for their mm. birthday or whatever. Or, yeah, yeah. I think John Blanche is quite well known, isn't he, for just painting miniatures for his friends. Um, I think it's awesome. You know, I I I I, I enjoy doing it certainly. Um, mm. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, no, more saying for non-miniature people, so for just their family. It's just it's just it's some minis. That's really cool. I'd never thought of that. I've seen a few times where people have done it for wedding cake toppers. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, which is quite fun, um, but no, I'd never, I'd never really thought of just doing it. Depends if they appreciate it or not. <laughs> I know for your nan, yeah. A few years ago, I did get little matchbox versions of my mates' cars and and uh, like Mad Max them up and give them to them. That wasn't for Christmas cool. or anything. It was just because I was playing around with. Give your nan a uh, one of the new world eaters. Yes, nan. <laughs> yeah. Here, oh, nan, here's a bean blade. Yeah. <laughs> it's far worse you could be getting um so uh nice uh, right, but yeah it, that's that's the idea behind uh, yeah. behind this so, can, so let's kick it off and see what we is got it, is it worth noting we've no one's asked us to pick these people it that's is very true yeah this is not just generally subject, which is quite apt given that the very first one you've shown up is does have a professional relationship with us in the sense of red grass send us bits to use for our classes uh, and they have done since the very beginning of cult um they sent us uh, the, their wet palettes to use when we do do classes and stuff like that so we're obviously big fans of them but we also just buy their stuff um and yeah. you know when there's no affiliate link or anything like that with them so I need you know to, uh, actually pick uh, up a new part of it because i tried to strip the paint out of the ink holder yeah, yeah. i forgot about it for a day smell would right through it wow <laughs> wow <laughs> wow just use a bit of <coughs> Christ, Matt. What are you using? So this is a bio strip. I don't know. Bit... Dodgy batch, maybe. That is a really dodgy batch of bio strip. Right? Yeah, I was going to strip um, a model, but maybe not now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Red Cross Games. They started out with their uh, everlasting wet palettes, uh, and then over the last few years, they've just sort of expanded and expanded, haven't they? With different types of wet palettes, uh, second gens. You've got some glass palettes for oils. Extreme they've got a new right? lamp coming out. Um, I think, do they do brushes? I think they do. I'm not sure about Pretty brushes. Sure. Um, they do that brilliant little cutting mat type thing that you can see mm. in that photo. Um, yes. Yeah, which Love is just super, super useful. And I think it was it was at this time where, you, you know, we sort of get trends, don't we, in our hobby? You know, there was there was the time when everyone suddenly started doing like Games Workshop knockoff plastics. There was the time when uh, 3d printing suddenly got going there was mdf scenery you know there's always fads right and trends that that, that mm. come out and i think there was there was a period where there was this sort of void for as, as this painting really exploded mm. you know as a, i'm sure it would have coincided with instagram and, uh, and all that sort of thing and all of a sudden you have people really producing for painters not just for gamers yeah um, and it feels like Redgrass sort of got in fairly early with that um, and have really stuck at it. Um, you know, they seem to support a hell of a lot of creators. Um, I'm always seeing their um, their logo on people's things. Um, you know, and and 
you know, for, for a reason, I guess. Um, but yeah, I love them. I use both their palettes. I use the little one and the big one. Um, yeah. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit naughty and I don't always wash my sponge as often as I should. Um, I, had to beach I think I've ever day, washed it. Which means I end up buying more. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've ever washed that sponge. That sponge, Rich, is now structurally just mould. Um, Probably. So Making your own programs. Look, look <laughs> after yourself there, mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Christian's saying in the chat their clippers are really good. Yeah, they've, they've expanded out into it. It really is a, it's a big range now um, of bits and bobs. Um, so, yeah, that was the, the sort of first one. I've am, not tried their, their glass palette. I'm mm. interested in getting that new light when it comes out. I mm. want to get rid of my, like... Chinese knockoff thing. Hmm. Hey, getting the right light is a, is a delicate business. You've got to, it's got to be just right. I think different lights affect your eyes differently. If you hmm. wear glasses like we do, it's how many, how many is, how many is too many. I started off with one poxy little round light, then I went to a strip light, then two strip lights. Andy has about eight strip lights. It looks like fucking Wembley well, Stadium in his painting room. We spoke about this, didn't we, a while back? Someone asked in the chat of. Oh, why do you spend 100, 120 pounds on a on a daylight, you know, Lumi or, or things like that when you can just stick two bulbs in mm. some IKEA angle poise? And I, and I think it's exactly what you're saying, Rich. Is it's it it's what works for you. Um, I have easily yeah. wasted at least another task lamp's worth of money on cheaper mm. versions, which just don't work for me. No. Um, you know, I've got umpteen then, light bulbs out in in the utility room there that I can't use anywhere else in the fucking house because it'll end up looking <laughs> like I'm either growing something I shouldn't be, you know, or or running a, a tanning salon. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas, is, whereas the strip lights work. And this is going to sound really weird, but in my head, if you were to look at a painting desk that had no cutting mat, had a shitty little lamp, not a nice like, wet palette, wouldn't make me want to sit down and be like, right, I'm going to paint really well at, in this space. Mm. I think there is, it, it, maybe it's just the way that my brain works, but you know, seeing a nice setup where you've got a couple of really good task lamps, a really nice wet palette, a nice cutting mat. I, when I sit in that space and it's all neat and tidy, I go, oh yeah, I really want to mm. be in this space and create something. Mm. So but again, like, that's interesting. That's you. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, there's some people like that. Like Andy's room is very sterile, isn't it? It's very clinical. It's very clean. Um, I mean, I would love, I would love to. I, in an ideal world, I would like to think I could be like that, but that's just yeah. not the way I am. I quite like or attract clutter. I like <laughs> having colourful mats on the floor. I like having plants. I like having things around me. You yeah. know, it is, but it's. And that's both of those things are okay, aren't they? You know, it's they're, they're, oh, yeah. it's one of those things is this as the more and more we talk about painting, the more and more we see each other, you know, when we see other artists and you see their painting environments, you realize that there just is no right and mm. wrong way, mm. is there? No, it's funny, isn't it? If you look at some people, it, it is, you know, there isn't a goddamn thing on that desk apart from yeah. the single miniature that they're painting and the single brush that they're using to paint it. Right. If you look at my studio, there is shit everywhere in here. There's stuff on the walls. <laughs> there are weapons. There are fucking all sorts of things. I do find but, myself having to like clean like every other weekend to get rid of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm tidier now because obviously I, I do it for work. So I have to have a tidy. I mean, I'm one of the reasons it might sound quite echo in here is because I'm redoing my studio at the minute in an attempt to be able to keep that slightly bohemian vibe that I enjoy being in but in a slightly more professional environment um, so it can get work. But like, I know what you're saying, man, like I'll clean up on a Sunday evening and then by the time I get to Friday, my workspace has shrunk mm. back down into an A5 sized square. I can just about, just about do something. I do that all um, the time. I always clean it up. I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be dirty. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not like that. Like I want to be hygienic, but maybe I just need to stop worrying about trying to be all, clinical with it and just just go with it right go gotta, go full you got full that line of ordered clutter yeah yeah <laughs> i, I so. mean i think by the nature of the hobby that we do we collect a lot of stuff like just stuff well that's what this episode is going about, <laughs> <Literally> <laughs> about. Get some more of it, yeah. yeah exactly extreme, go buy orders. Some more. But, <laughs> extreme orders 
Um, but I think, yeah, if you, if you, if you don't even know where the space is at, I always feel that I'll go through stages where my hobby space is just an absolute mess. There is shit everywhere. And I put it off and put it off and put it off. But then I put it off to the point where it makes me so angry. I have like a fucking deep clean of the entire space, throw a load of shit away, make it so tight that I'm like, how have I ever run out of room in here? There's yeah. nothing in here now. And then gradually, like you said, start with two desks. And a few <laughs> weeks later, I'm working in a space like this and I'm like pushing like a whole armful of paints just out the way. And You got it. Yeah. You got it. Um, the chat of uh, uh, they're all slightly concerned about your mat, your painting sponge. Um, Matt's saying if you put a penny underneath, uh, like a copper penny underneath the mat, it does help. And that's true. I've started doing that. And I put a little isopropyl down as well um, before oh, I put my hand and touch wood. I haven't had a moldy sponge for a couple of months now. Um, Christian, as Christian saying, you can just stick it in a microwave for a minute, kills everything. That's an idea. I might do it when I get home, actually. I will um, clean. That'll be a good hobby achievement. <laughs> clean my comes out and punches you because it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like someone out yeah. of the gremlins or something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but back, back to Regros, I guess. They're, they're making, you know, these things to, to hopefully make that environment a little more enjoyable to paint, mm. right? It's actually, if everything out of arm's reach is a bit of a mess, as long as you can zone that out, and you can work in this area in front of you if you've got a palette that you can rely on. And pe- the, like, the palette's been around the longest, right? And you'll get people go, oh, I just use Tupperware. And I used Tupperware, kitchen roll, and baking paper for years um, because that's what, what I was shown on YouTube. Like when I got back in the hobby, that's what someone was using. But just the quality of life upgrade to these little low-profile palettes, you know, you buy the packs of paper and it's all trimmed. It's not... You haven't got to flatten it out so it doesn't curl up, you know, and all those little things that they save you a few seconds, maybe a minute here and there. But every session that adds up, it adds up, it adds up. And the the fewer barriers you've got to getting Mm. sat down and painting, the better, right? But, you know, I'm finding particularly as I'm getting older and and different responsibilities, any barrier to painting has to be removed. Like, you know. It's it's one of those things that you would, before you used it, you would, probably think well what's the Mm. point i would never be bothered or never Mm. really give a shit about using that and then when you've got one you think fuck how did i ever do this without this yeah Mm. i mean i when i got back into painting i started with a wet palette Mm. so as i said it it was it was was, years and years of using homemades but it genuinely was a lovely sort of upgrade and obviously you can't use a wet palette for everything um, you know, right. metallics often separate out on them and uh, things yeah. like that. But they do come with a little well, little magnetic well pallet on the side as well, which is which is Super. cool. Um, so yeah, so Red Cross Games, really quality equipment. They give a crap, really. They support a lot of artists. Um, they're constantly bringing out new products. As I say the lamp, I don't think is out yet, but it is very Some soon. Free order, I think. Right. Um, interesting. And maybe we'll, we get hold of one and have a look at it. But some. Um, yeah, just very, very cool. So, mm. who's up next? Oh, first Todd's Rain. So, again, it's talking about uh, trends or, or mm. ads or whatever. 3D printing came in. You had talented people. Some less talented people start producing things, you know, printing things for your miniatures. And firstly, Keith's stuff, the, the guy who runs First Todd's Rain, is exceptional quality. He's a hugely talented um animator very very au fait with, I didn't realize. with yeah. computers like yeah i mean keith's worked on any big budget film you can think of for the last goodness knows how many years he's he's done um he's he's very good um but the nice story about the star terrain to me anyway uh, me and keith knew each other years and years and years ago we both used to listen to the same podcast there was a podcast meetup at salute Went around salute, went to the Fox pub afterwards, and we're sat there, and obviously we'd known each other from chatting on the Facebook page and all of that. And we get natter in a few jars, and we're both sort of saying how much we'd love to make a living or, or have a company within this industry. And this is years before Colt Paint happens and Versatile Terrain happens. But we're here. We've done it. Um, you know, so it's nice to, you know, it's nice to, <laughs> it's nice to when those yeah. other things happen. Um, but again, you know, Keith, he doesn't stop. He doesn't rest on his laurels. He creates. He innovates, um, and and that's the key to me. That's why I want to support him. Um, is you know, it's because the stuff is quality. Um, now I'm not 
advocating for me anyway nameplates on like a 40k army or things like that but i freaking love it on my titans i absolutely love nameplates on my titans i really like seeing it on the blood bowl miniatures mm. um just got into necromunda very tempted to do it for necromunda as well um, i think it works for well. team yeah oh yeah kill team right he's he's brought out now a, a range of like flat like plaques for you to use on your plinths as well yeah. Um, so again, just nice little. Yes, you could make your own. Yes, you could do it. But actually, do you know Pretty what? Up. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Couple of quid. There you've got a lovely True. back. You can paint up. You can make it look cool. You can do a David Soper. You know, mm. with with all the, all that cool thing. Um, and he's got some. Excuse me. He's got some exciting projects coming up in the future as well. Um, there's a reason terrain is in the uh, is in the name, even though we've not seen a huge amount. Uh, from him from that but uh, i don't know if either of you guys have used uh, the vt stuff before no yeah but as, as matt said for kill team it's the sort of thing that i think once i found a kill team that i want to well as i am working on at the moment that i want to take to multiple tournaments um all my kill teams all have names so all mm. the individual operatives in all of my kill teams have names so i think yeah it'd be cool to take them to a tournament, I think, with the names on it. It's, uh, it just, add, it, 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 like with the, the Titans, it just adds that layer of narrative to things that I really mm. love in small groups of stuff. So like you said, for armies, I don't think it sits, just personally, because I just think it doesn't work. But yeah, for kill teams where you're trying to add like another level of of, of narrative to, yeah. to the things that you're playing. I, it's, it's just, it separates it out, doesn't it, visually? You know, the skirmish stuff already does look different, but it's it, it crosses that lot that will blends, blurs that line rather between, you know, a video game and a, a tabletop game and, yeah. and just little little things, you know, and even really simple things like with Titanicus, knowing where the front of your fucking base is, um, you know, knowing where the front arc is, you know, so, and he's done little things like the front arc will be marked, mm. you know, so, mm. you know, and it's just That's clever, just little Little touches, um, and I say he's always, always innovating. And I said, there's, there's people, other people that do this. Don't get me wrong, but you know, he was there first, and I still think he's doing it the best. Um, and uh, yeah, great, great little uh, sort of little cottage industry. Do you call it when it's like a little? I don't know. I've heard that phrase before. I like the sound of it. That's what it is, Keith's cottage. Never industry. heard that one before. Keith's <laughs> but uh, yeah, so whilst when he's not busy animating the next i don't know jurassic park or whatever he's uh he's busy doing busy doing this yeah so uh here we go phil's using it in the chats he's loving it yeah the amount of fonts you can choose is bananas as well yeah yeah it's good 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 fun and all the bases are covered i mean this photo is obviously looks like your smaller sort of 32s but i mean it doesn't write up to every biggest yeah yeah Cool. Right. Who's up next? Next is we. Matt. Take it away, Matt. Ah, oh, uh, yeah. It's <laughs> what everything you want in fantasy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you just buy a Lucas bus just to have them. Like, and you've got one just out of shop, right? I do. I I got props yeah. like Blue Blue Peter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a. Uh, that's one for, for Monty next year. You're right. A lot of people do buy them, don't they, just to have as sculptures, like just as, yeah. as collector's pieces. I mean, I mean we've, we've featured his stuff basically every time he does a new one. We'll, mm. we'll talk about it, right? Yeah. Um, but they're getting better and better and better. And um, what's the little series he's doing that includes? Is it um, Mercenaries? Mercenaries. So the yeah. Dwarf is the next one out um, pre-orders this Friday. So right. get it. Yeah, if you want it, you've got to get yeah. in on the pre-order. That's it. Yeah, because so it'll be I like a two-day window, right? I missed the Bullsaurus one, and I regret it. So, <laughs> yeah, I want the I want the Dwarf Mercenary, and uh, obviously I've got Didn't the Goblin we... one. Yeah, we we featured that Goblin on the bottom a few like a few times on this poddy. It's an exceptional model. Mm -hmm. It is it is it, it encapsulates, encapsulates sort of high fantasy. I think for quite a yeah. few of us in miniature form. Um, somebody said that dwarf on the top left was like that, it look, that looks like you if, if if I was ever in a fantasy <laughs> setting. Apparently, that's what I would look like. It's not bad, is it? All right, yeah. well let's let's go this then. It, it it's not the sole reason for for doing this topic, but 
you come into to, you've got some money to spend or someone's going to spend some money on you we enjoy buying things in this hobby it is good to spend a bit of money on yourself if you're able to you know you, you need to enjoy enjoy things you give gifts all of that sort of thing don't feel guilty about it but what is the reason that you or we are talking about these other companies rather than saying i'll oh, go and get another box of 20 space marines or go and get the latest games workshop fomo army box and stuff why why spirit mirabilis why i think broadening your horizons to different providers of hobby of miniatures of it could be kit it doesn't have to be a miniature but it could be kit it could be could be miniatures i think it will open you up to a, like a different mm. world of, of of hobby and something that you may never necessarily have experienced if you did just stick to that kind of traditional, I'm going to go buy myself, you know, I've got a 4,000 point army. I'm going to buy myself my fourth squad of Terminators. Well, if you didn't, maybe and you went and you bought a different model and then you painted that up and it was the first big thing that you've ever painted. It would change your trajectory a little bit potentially. Mm. I think... Games Workshop is amazing. The big companies are amazing, obviously, because we spend a lot of time painting those miniatures and collecting them anyway. But I think there is there's a charm and there's like a, 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 a slight, not to call Games Workshop soulless, but there is a real soul to, 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 to mm. a, a, an item that somebody in a shed like the one that I'm sat in has spent their hard uh, time mm. creating it has a kind of like not to get too philosophical into it, but it's almost got like a piece of them in it. Mm. When you when you when you hold a CAD design Space Marine, it's yeah, it's awesome, it's really cool. But when you hold a miniature that somebody has that one individual person has created the backstory for, has done the artwork for, has handwritten the label that's inside the box, mm. has hand sculpted this model out of a bit of clay and a bit of tin foil, and their mate has cast it, and they've only made sixty of them. It's got a different worth to it, I think, yeah. than something that is produced that is one of how many how many space marines are I there mean, models in the world. It's also variety. Many, I mean, yeah. if everything was just one manufacturer making one thing, it would be a very boring hobby. Mm. Like having mm. you know Lucas Pina and like uh, like Big Child and all these other things. Like they coat of paint. Yeah, yeah coat of paint. <laughs> uh there you go. get it <laughs> yeah. it, it adds you know flavor and variety it it becomes more than just a little thing you do and you kind of your room in a way yeah continues that also, creativity doesn't it yeah yeah and i think also it, it gives you a snapshot into people's personal view of fantasy worlds you know we all have them we watch lord of the rings and we think oh what i wonder what this place that we've never seen looks like or i wonder if you went to this world what it would look like or in my mind dwarfs don't look exactly like they do in lord of the rings they look like this and i'm going to create that and share that with everybody i think that's really interesting that's a really interesting point someone 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 said something on twitter today it was it was a post they were, were deliberately looking out old Pre Peter Jackson movie trilogy, uh, Lord of the Rings art, to and they were saying, oh, I like the Peter Jackson trilogy and everything, but because of that and the Hobbit and uh, whatever the new one was called, Rings of Power, there's a there's a danger that you start to think Middle Earth mm. only looks like that. Mm. Yeah, you know, and and whereas actually the definitive, right? Yeah, the joy of fantasy in particular sci fi is it can look like anything, right? Mm. Um that's true. I'd no, I'd not consider that as an answer. It's Rich. like when you look at um Paul Bonner arts mm. of trolls and dwarfs and goblins mm. and all that stuff. They are totally different to everything else. Mm. I mean mm. there's there's no one way of doing it, which is kind of what like little producers it kind of, you know, that's the way it makes cool miniatures. It's not yeah. what <laughs> If you think of it also like small producers, they do a lot of things on their own, but they will tend to have a little bit of outside of it. So for instance, if you've got an idea, but you're not the most artistic person, you've got a cool idea, you get a concept artist. It could be a mate of yours. It could be someone that's 
fairly new into the industry, whatever, you ask them to create this piece of artwork, they might add something to it that you didn't think of, that you think, oh, that's a great idea. Mm. And then you get it made. And then you give that model, this thing that you've created in your head that is now real in the world, you give that to a painter that's maybe a friend of yours. And they paint it in a way that maybe you didn't think of. And you think, fuck, that looks really cool too. And then you see that that thing that all these different people have had a slight influence on. And it kind of, I don't know, I think most, like, and you guys must, you know, you must feel this yeah, way. It's a really exactly. like, proud thing. It's amazing. A really proud thing to think. Yeah, yeah. It's this idea that I had this random fucking fantasy idea in my head, this random idea it's of a, a scenario. Creative, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think it can't be understated how important that is still in a world where. 3D printers are now a couple hundred quid. You know, that that everyone, it's giving everyone license to kind of create the mm. things that we've had knocking around in our heads since we were 15 or yeah. nine, chasing each other around with a stick, pretending it was a fucking great big two-handed sword and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think so. And it's, it's you know, <laughs> but and equally at the end of the day, if you don't support them, they disappear. Yeah. You know, if you don't buy that box of Space Marines, G, G Dub will probably be okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, but I mean, you know, especially with like it's... sort of runs like this, because it's not it's not cheap to create a cast mold and mold. Oh, no. However, hundred many, I think the the orc did to thousand and fifty thousand, right, one hundred something. That's not going to be cheap to produce. That's gonna because it's a small mm. run. Small runs usually higher costs. Ab- ab- absolutely. So supporting small producers like this, because he made the first few, and you know they did maybe 30, 40. Mm. They were made mostly for him, <laughs> and then selling them on to cover costs yeah. or whatever. But like that's what's quite nice about it, because he was making them regardless whether they were going to be sell- sold or not. So mm. that's very much his stuff that people can just buy. <laughs> yeah. This is it's quite close, isn't it, to buying artwork. Hmm. It is buying artwork. But but um but but prints rather than I, buying an original, right? You're buying you're buying yeah. you know, a limited run print, yeah, 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 thing, yeah. right? That, I guess that's the closest thing I can think of. Christian in the chat's just saying, um, is there any concern that small production can mean lower quality, or is the standard so high these days that it's no longer considered an issue? I mean, Rich was saying, Oh, it's great, everyone's got 3D printers and access to CAD and stuff. I mean Everyone always used to have access to FEMO and green stuff and, and this, that, and the other. And, and I certainly would not want to purchase a large majority of the um, stuff people create. I'm glad they're creating, you know, but I, I think, I think it, it's, it's simply a different medium. You know, we, we, we've always had these little cottage producers and stuff. Um, I, mean, it's, I, you know, I don't think it necessarily means lower standards i mean some yeah there's a there's a lot of stls out there which you would just go <laughs> why <laughs> it's, but hmm. there are a lot also which are you know amazing really amazing right yeah and there's i, I mean certainly so. yeah if you're if you're if you're into your 3d printing particularly the last year some of the stuff you're able to get hold of now print machine wise it's 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 been one of those jumps hmm. um and you're getting people that are good at printing and they're printing out these things. And they're like, I've used the same printer. I've used the same settings. I know what I'm doing. Why does this model look like garbage? And this one doesn't. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot more to it than simply making a cool looking yeah. render. You know, yeah. like, like there's some real incredible talent out there yeah. on some of these STL Patreon things. But there's also a lot of cheap shit. Hmm. you know but as as there kind of is with the the i don't know what you call it the the physical miniatures world you know hmm. that there is there is a a quality and a price point for hmm. most people this is probably there is with everything but yeah it's probably the easiest way to uh to, to, to look at with the, like, lucas's stuff is because they're all traditionally sculpted as well hmm. you'll never get that i don't know when you put them when you look at them you could probably make that in in 3D, but I still don't saying. think you would quite no. have the same no. it's, feel it's and that, look of a traditional that, that, sculpt. It, 
an age-old argument. Like if you remember <laughs> the, the if you got a robot to create a chair and it did it ten and it, and it did it quicker than a human body did it. It was neater. There wasn't as many mistakes. Is it still as beautiful as a chair that this one person has spent hours of their life creating? Mm. And I don't see. I think it's. I, I'm of the opinion that both chairs are great, but it just depends on what you're after. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you want the chair that's very, very quick to make and is very easy, <laughs> and there's six thousand of them, and you can pick it up down the high street for ten ninety nine. But then sometimes you want the chair that has sold to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Ron Swanson only makes one of those chairs a year. You can't, you know, exactly. you can't run it. Um, but yeah, Ron Swanson chair. Am- amazing, <laughs> amazing artist. Um, is going from strength to strength. Um, yeah. Su- support them if you like what they do. Yeah, man. Um, so who's up next? So I think it was. Ah, oh, yeah. Cool. So this is one of my picks is Durgan Paintforge mm. talking about people's specific view of a fantasy genre or a fantasy race or I think certain ones specifically dependent on what your view of it is certain companies or certain miniatures or producers will just speak to you so the way that I see fantasy in my head there are some things that certain producers make that just it's like they've pulled it out of my head <laughs> And these guys specifically, it, it, they have, especially the, their original dwarf range that they did. It was the first Kickstarter I ever, I ever um, bought in on, and and the quality and the, I it was one of those things where you do a Kickstarter and you kind of forget about it. And I got a box turn up one day, and I was like, this was back when I was ordering something like every two days, <laughs> and I just had this box turn up, and I opened it. And it just felt so special. It was, you know, the, the box was beautiful. It had this incredible original artwork completely around it. The box had a little magnetized flap in it. And when you opened it, the first thing you got was a book. And it was a book that had a little bit of fluff around the story around these specific dwarves. And there was a bit of, there was original artwork in it. And then you, you, you then delved in a bit further and you got the miniatures out. And they were just like, perfect they were they were how i see dwarves in fantasy in my brain and i was holding them in the real world <laughs> and um great company they were you know i contacted them during the kickstarter because i actually missed the kickstarter by a day i was away with work missed it and i emailed them and said oh my god can i please still i would love to contribute is there any way i can do that yeah sure no worries at all they were really like accommodating about it and they've gone from strength to strength as well their original release did very did well, and they've kind of added to it. They've added some more. They've done a few more ranges, and now they're doing some like bigger stuff. Mm. Um, and they're a great, great little company. The art, the, the painters who work there as well are all really good quality as well. So they're just yeah. It's it's, it's uh, whenever I see on their Instagram, it's just a happy little corner of the internet for me where I look <laughs> at it and go, ah, oh, that's really good. Nice. Yeah, they they do excellent stuff. We feature them once or twice. Over the last year or so, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. You, where are they based? I don't know, actually. I really don't. I sh- uh, um, I'm not sure. Somewhere in yeah. Europe, because there's there's stores in euros. So. Right. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you can get STLs and resin off of them. Yeah. So you can get either yeah. or, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I, cool. I've still got I've still got all of the original. Kit. I painted one. But it's, they're, mini, they're miniatures that I'm holding onto until I get to the point where I'm happy enough with my ability to paint them <laughs> and be really happy with them. But we'll ever get to that. It, like, oh, I know that feeling, mate. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's going back to like talk about space marines. If I want to practice, I'll pick up a space marine because I know that I'll be able to buy, you know, as many as I want for the rest of my yeah. life. Yeah. Whereas these hold already hold a special meaning to me because uh, you know and when i get to the point where i want to paint something that really means something to me and i really want to push myself on and try hard on that's when i'll look at them and get them out and go you know what yeah it, it's the time now's that time exciting mm. i believe it's it's italy okay yeah cool could be wrong though. cool um but yeah wiki company as you say been around a while now so again nice to see them Sticking at it. 
you know, there's, there's, mm. there's nothing worse, right, than, than when you find something cool or like you find a cool band and then you realize they broke up 10 years ago, you know, or, oh, or it's devastating things that. like that, right? So it's, it's, it's <laughs> you know, all these producers we're talking about, they're, they're, they're doing well, they're going strong for a reason, you know, and we want to keep yep. seeing them improve and, and, and expand and or just keep going. Um, mm. You know, you don't always need to improve, right? Don't always need to expand. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. Mm. As long as we keep yeah. buying it. Nice one. Right. What's up next, Matt? Just conscious of the time. Ah, so now Matt reckons this is going to be a controversial one. So, <laughs> I, yeah. You know um, the internet. They're horrible people I, sometimes. Yeah. Um, Isopus have been around <laughs> for quite a while now. Um, and you could argue that they're not that small of a producer. Um, I think I, I really wanted to talk about them partly because I, I think they have changed. I think they've changed particularly in the UK, um, the painting scene. Mm. We, we have a friendship with them, with some of the, some of the people involved in them. Um, and in the future, we may have business things to do with them. But this is very much from a, a consumer's point of view that, that we're looking at. It. Um, they went through quite a lot of change the last 18 months um, we had a chance to go up to their factory. We've seen the new manager that runs it all. We've seen the small team of people that are working there. It's it's this sort of it's what you you hope a little mm. British company can achieve and can be. They've got a warehouse. They all get on. You walk in. There's music playing. There's a, a quite a diverse mix of people in there. They're all enjoying it. They're all taking care with what they're doing. They're, they're passionate about what they're doing. And I think you're yeah. starting to see some of the more recent products are showing that they can be this bespoke artisanal I, company now, right? I always see them as kind of the Morgan of the, the hobby world. Like the, what, car, the, the, the car, 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 the yeah. car, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the way I kind yeah. of see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Up north, mm. yeah. industrial made out factory, factory made out yeah. of wood. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's fair. Um, you know, they 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 produce real quality brushes is their main thing. They produce other things as well, but brushes is what was what was seen. They have good quality brushes, but they're very good quality brushes. They're made by a, a renowned brush manufacturer to the specifications of of this company. Um, but for me, all, all of that's great, right? But for me, the reason I wanted to include them and, and is the way I think they changed things up was they put these in hobby stores. Mm. So when you get to painting, you, you probably come through Games Workshop. So you're probably buying Games Workshop brushes. And if you brought the artificer, bought the artificer brushes, they were very good quality paint brushes, right? Because again, they were made by a, a renowned brush manufacturer they were good quality they were very expensive like very very expensive right um and that was kind of your choice it was that or a, you know a five five pack for a quid down the works you know mm -hmm. or whatever dollar store type brushes right and, and you'll get people bang on about um uh oh, i can do all of this with a dollar dollar store brush and that's great good good for you buddy but a lot of people can't right yeah. um but for me, it was the fact that they got these things into the into the hobby shops. So now all of a sudden, oh, you know, I've gotten back into this hobby. I uh, no, specifically, I'm back in this hobby. I'm into painting. I go on YouTube. I go on Google. What paint brushes should I use? And you get all the usuals. You get your Windsor and Newtons, your Rosemary and Co., your Raphaels, things like that. And I'm like, oh, great. These sound wicked. Right. Where can I get them from? Ah, OK, so I need to go and find this niche art shop that may or may not be in my town if my town's big enough to support it. Because do you really want to be buying your brushes online? You know, when you're spending 10 to 20 pounds on a brush and you want it to be just right, pointy. don't you? Pointy, That's right? Ideally, cheers, Phil. We'll, we'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching. But, um, you know, you want to be able to sit and don't get me wrong. I buy them online. Of course I have done. Um, but the nicest thing is to be able to walk in and, and test mm. it, right? Mm. I mean, um, before like you can. Yeah, if you can't get into a shop, you basically just have to buy like five of the brushes that you want, mm -hmm. pick the best Hope one out of it, yeah. and then send the rest back. Which and this is, is where I was at with, with my Windsor & Newtons. You know, I use Windsor & Newtons Series 7 for, since I got back in, 10, 15 years, wherever it's been. And I used to be able to go to an art shop, lived in London, I used to be able to walk to a local art shop and get them, and then I didn't. So I started using Ken Bromley online, 
they were a great little art or quite a big i think art supplier online but i did exactly what you're saying matt i'd have to buy three at a time mm. because i knew i wouldn't get three great ones um and it sucks man um so i think for the the sheer change i think it's made is brought to the sort of painting scene i i, I think they're worth championing and as i said you know i really having gone up there and met the team that are producing it all i think they're cool i like it it's it's a, mm. a you i i would aspire to have a company like that in a sense you know in the uk you know it's, it's fun funny. i think a, yeah. a sign of a good product is that how many people are now copying it <laughs> right so it was doing something right exactly exactly and what we've said before about a few others seeing them reinvest that's always exciting right that's yeah. a company i'm i'm going to be inclined to to support uh cult paint high street stores i wish matt that'd be lovely um well maybe not at the minute not with business not rates with fuel, fuel fuel bills and business rates yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be, it could be uh lawrence is saying in the chat gurgin paint forge is an italian painter called matteo uh, he's won a few golden demons uh, and has a youtube channel under the same name oh. there you go um, actually is uh his uh what they called the new squats what they called Votan. Yeah. I picked he was my pick actually two weeks ago. Oh yeah. You know, we did it yeah, yeah, the green the always. green ones, yeah. 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 Yeah, nice man. Nice. Um so yeah, so this is again it's not miniatures, um, but it's stuff to help you enjoy your miniatures more. Mm. Uh, mm. and uh yeah, I've I've started buying them, you know, so that's why I'm why I'm talking what's about them. Really good about it is like you publicly is it's it's difficult to see, but when you know the people that are doing it mm. and just how much of a shit they give about what they're making, yeah, it it really does show. Like yeah. it's yeah. that's what you need in a company. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and as I say, it's big change in the last eighteen months. Big change, and I yeah. think you know, it's, it's I'm liking I'm liking what they're doing. I think you can see that with like everyone that we've picked though, and all the small. Uh, producers of stuff like no one's really becoming a minute a, a miniatures maker or brush maker to to challenge Warren Buffett for you know richest man alive, are they? <laughs> um, and ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people that create something for this hobby are part of this hobby and they mm. do it in their spare time. So I think that don't think that can be understated that care that goes into it. Like if you go and work for a company that creates something, I don't know, you, it creates football and you're going to go toss about football. It's just work. Mm. Whereas I think everything that, that, that gets created by the small independent people for this hobby is, there's a, there's a level of love to it because, it, you know, they're here because they want to work in a yeah. environment yeah. and a hobby that they love, you know? Absolutely. Um, David's saying in the chat, got any advice for someone launching a miniatures brand? He's about to. That's a whole other show, probably that, David. Um, what I'd say is lo love, love what you're producing and have a, an idea of what you would deem success. Um, because unless it's a Space Marine ripoff, you're probably not going to make a huge amount of money from it. So it's worth... It's worth really loving, <laughs> really loving what you're doing. It will, it will um, be difficult yeah. but rewarding. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Um, right, have we got a couple more? One. Or does more. that bring us to the end? Bring us to the end. As I say, it's by no means exhaustive, but hopefully, it's hopefully it's given you guys a few ideas as well to to jump off of. Ah, here he is, big big popper plinth, Taro. <laughs> um, I think la I, I I I take. I think we should take some credit for Tara's explosive success. <laughs> um, but if you're going to talk about someone who loves what they do and works their arse off um, to produce stuff and keep mm. innovating, keep creating, you know, he's one of them. Um, it, it, his plinths, you know, you go to any painting competition now, there's Tara plinths there. You go to any Golden Demon and there's mainly Tara there we 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 did we we stood <laughs> at the cabinets with him and he counted how many there were and i can't remember how many he said i think it was, it was like 150 
It's incredible, it right? Yeah. It was a yeah. fuckload, basically. I mean, he had a, he had a handful out. We we brought the Dare Girl Kickstarter out a couple of years ago now, um, and he had a couple of plints out at the time. We said, "Oh, Tara, let's make some new ones." So we made these backdrop ones, and we made some different sized ones, and they went really well. And now I think he's got 50, 60, 70 oh, something so plints. Many. It's, it's insane, right? He's he's he's, he's full time. He's quit his job. He's gone full it all in on this, um, and it's and it's great to see, you know, um, you know. And again, it's it's a it's a Brit who who gives a fuck and is is trying to make the hobby better, um, and you know, and do well, do well for himself, which I, is uh, which is with the um with the dreadnought thing. I I was bugging him <laughs> for a, a couple of weeks. I said, can you can you make a a, a uh, a right hand for, for the new new dreadnought. Oh, he's in the come, chat. Here he he is. Come with one, <laughs> make it. And I, I love the fact that he has the skill set to go. Yeah, I'm gonna cad that out, and then it'll be cast up and is on his store. <laughs> like, I it's, wish um, I had that um, ability. You know, especially things like your dreadnought arms. I'd suggest buying them if you want them, because because I, I suspect some stuff won't always be there, um, <laughs> but uh, but the plints will. And we love we love a bit of plinth action and bananas for scale. Oh, here we go, 170 Thank plinths in the range now. And he's got more coming. Um, Kinder Buenos yeah. with every single order. There we go. Um, so fine <laughs> as long as you've got a nut allergy. Um, you know, but it's hazelnuts, hazelnut. isn't it? Yeah. Kinder. Game, game over, mate. Yeah, Kinder it's Buenos. Hazelnut, yeah. It's hazelnut and milk, basically. Yeah. You don't care because it's beige and therefore exactly. If it's exactly. the colour of a, a scout uniform, that's how food should be. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, sorry. It's the COVID. Yeah, what, watching you eat in Italy was one of the most depressive experiences <laughs> of my life. Let's not let's not get derailed. Um, we'll talk about Matt and his saucy exploits on a on a, on another show. Um, but yeah, seriously, it's quality stuff. It's someone who knows what they're doing. And again, you're going to get other people doing it, much like with the nameplates that Keith does. But there's reason some people are better at it. Um, and I think largely because they give a fuck. So mm -hmm. worth and, uh, checking out. And like working with resin is not fun. So just on that alone. <laughs> Uh, Dan's just been buying the Kinders. He's been glad they've been coming with plints, though. So that's uh, that's good. Oh, it's Froggos at the moment, as Costco have run out of Kinders. There we go. Freddos. <laughs> I was going to say, Froggos is the is the little well, version. Yeah. It? Just way too many um, Freddos. A cost of inflation <laughs> on those things. <laughs> but before we get before we get go down the, it's quite a common thing, right? People sending out sweets with. Uh, I always worry with... though. Yeah, Terrors was <laughs> marijuan for a while. I, I I'm fairly sure the the demographic. What's it called, Matt? When you get them graphs that them circles that do that. Yeah, fairly sure the Venn diagram for for people who enjoy sweeties and people who like painting toy soldiers is. I don't know. You buy like a random thing off eBay and it comes to like some unbranded weird. Like, well, I wouldn't be. Sweet. I wouldn't be eating I don't that. Eat them. Yeah, I would. Good. That's good advice. <laughs> that is good advice, <laughs> right? <laughs> right let's close this main section out other than that excellent advice um there was two more things really i wanted to chat about uh for ways you can spend that hobby dollar um or you know or, or look to support small producers um and that's patreon um you know we we we, we it's almost talked about so often now so many people have got them you can maybe forget really what it's about it's a bit like kickstarter right it's, it's you know they yeah. patreon is uh, uh, vital to small small producers um uh, content creators you know i know ourselves you know our, our patreon is, is sort of the lifeblood of, of what allows us to do what we do um so what i would say is you know if you do have a a creator or an artist that you you consume a lot of what they do you enjoy what they do um and they clearly work hard for it consider you know jumping on that patreon rather than buying that another box of 20 space marines I'm really sorry to our GW rep. Um, you know, we really appreciate the stuff you send us and stuff. Hey, I'm sorry we're telling, telling people they, not to buy Space Marines. They posted the <laughs> highest profits of any FTSE <laughs> yeah. 500 company there in the UK. We'll be so. all right. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll be fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it doesn't always have to be a tangible um, thing. You know, it's one of the great things. We say. So one of the reasons I quite like STLs in the sense of you can buy miniatures you really like, 
and you can store them on on your computer machine mm. rather than you know in the loft or under your bed or whatever. True. Um, but yeah, so Patreon I think is a, a really good way that you can be looking to support. And you know, it's not it, it's not charity. You know, you're getting a product, and you should expect a product or a service mm. from from what you're giving. Yeah. You know, so um, so that when you find the good ones support them um and then the last thing really on on that line of, of if you find the good ones support them um is your local hobby stores you know particularly at the moment with with things that are going on globally costs and all the rest of it um if you use your local hobby shop if you go and game there if you even just oh fuck i've run out of glue i need to run and get some and that's where you go support them um it's it's not easy. Like no one is is going into that to make make bank, right? Um, Incon Gaming's my local, uh, even though it's quite a long way away. Um, it's where we run a lot of our classes as well. They've supported us since day dot. But you know, it's if you don't support these local stores, if it's a games workshop, it's your local GW. If you don't support them, they're going to go, and all we'll end up doing is existing online, right? Yeah. Which is wonderful in lots of ways, but it, this is a it loses a charm. It's a hobby that that can be enjoyed socially, right, in person. Um, yeah, it has it, to be, but, but can be. There's something special as well about walking into a hobby shop that you've never been in before and seeing all the fucking random things that you didn't even know existed and you go in for glue and you leave with 75 quids worth of random <laughs> basing materials, bricks, barbed wire, yeah. plastic <laughs> art. Yeah. <laughs> One of the older like hobby shops, and you see all the lead on the wall. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, some, exactly, yeah. Some of the like the little model train ones, they've got great stuff, right? Like, oh my god, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, my local one, Antics in Bristol, is. Um, mm-hmm. I used to love going to that, going in there and seeing mm-hmm. some of the, the the random stuff that you you, you mm-hmm. get. And I hate shopping on the on the internet. I like picking some up and going, ah, this is what I'm after. I would like this, please. Let me exchange some money for it. That's um, it. And that's that's why shows yeah. are so good as well, right? Yeah, you know, you get yeah. to see it. You know, I understand online is it's great that you can get access to things, but I guess this is almost not talking about the things. This is talking about where you can go and enjoy yeah. the things and chat with other people mm. that enjoy the things. Yeah, uh, and, and, and you know that aspect of it as well. The people you could meet in hobby shops are people that you know, especially if you do this hobby and you don't have a, a, a group of dedicated yeah. hobbyist friends around you, what a place to meet them. You know, you go and you meet some like-minded people that you might, you know, you might never have met. And I, 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 I can attest to meeting some of the greatest people in my life uh, from going to hobby shops and going to shows. Like some of my best friends I now have are from going to hobby shops and going to shows. Um, and, and meeting people to talk about this random ass thing that we all do with all of our spare time. Absolutely, and they're yeah. getting few and far between hobby shops now. Like they are yeah. sort of yeah. almost disappearing. They're like sacred. One of the the it's not like Warhammery hobby shop, but like they did all like the RC cars and yeah. Hornby trains yeah. and all that stuff. And you know, I, I got my first RC cars yeah. there and like my Engage train set and all that stuff. It's gone now. Like yeah. it closed down. And yeah. do, don't get me wrong, right? If if a shop's crap and it doesn't work hard and it doesn't build its community and its client base and it just sits on its rolls, yeah, fuck it. Like, it deserves what it gets. But we've all been in the shops, the ones that you walk in and it's like the Wild West, right? Uh, uh, you don't feel very welcome. You get in and you get out and you're gone. But you've also, we've been to those ones where you're like, oh, my God, I wish this was my local. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know su- su- support them and there's a lot more out there than just the the couple of big online names as well you know yes they've come from from bricks and mortar stores and they're they're you know great places as well very often but there's plenty of slightly smaller ones too um so anyway i ain't gonna preach i ain't gonna tell what's doing your money but i think if you love your local shop and you use it really consider i consider uh supporting them you know the way they support you um but yeah i think that's sort of it that is um, for the for the main segment and because it's been a couple of weeks i've collected 
a bunch of paint cultist stuff for us to have a quick look at. Um, so hashtag paint cultist over on Instagram. Uh, if you want to expose yourself to a bunch of different styles of miniatures, different styles of painting, different accounts, go and check out that hashtag. I think you've got 16, 17,000 something on there now. Um, it's wonderful. And all we do is pop on every few weeks, grab a few that jump out, and I just share them on here. Um, I can never remember what I've picked. And I never remember to write the notes down about them because some of them have cool stories as well. So uh, I'll nine. enjoy this with you. <laughs> nine this one. As we, as we look through them. What we got? So this one was for Andy. Mm. Um, so if he's watching this back, I hope he enjoys it. I don't know for sure. I, I think I can see Andy's influence on this. Um, but I also mm. just love seeing miniatures when it's not a paint scheme you're expecting mm. you know yeah this lurid green uh what they called uh lumineth yeah yes very, no, very, very cool. I, like it. I like the like the base as well and they, yeah. that's very high fantasy isn't it it's hard i mean they are mm. ma maximum fantasy aren't they but i, I like as yeah. well that everything else is very very simple very mm. plain doesn't detract does it it's the green bam that's what's yeah, you know, and that's that would, that's going to work great for army painting. <laughs> yeah, but also it means it's going to look good. You know, on the, on that's what I was just about to say. Like that, that, that on a board as an army would look amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's about twenty pounds worth of tufts on that base, so fair play. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to use them, use them. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Very nice. Right, what's that next? Ah, speaking of tarot, <laughs> uh, so this is based off one of his stickers. Uh, and his fists, onager fists, or something. Um, Did he do those? Ah. This, the, like, I can run, I'm just coming back to me. This person, this account, did this model partly as a little homage to tarot stuff, but also to try and use bigger brushes. They felt they were getting okay. too used to using their like double zero and zero brushes. And they're like, right, bam, get a three. Let's try and do the whole model with it and just. Just practice like that, which I think is a really cool idea. Like it's it's the type of thing I will often do, like deliberately make things more difficult, um, <laughs> because you know when you go back, you'll have you'll have improved from it. Yeah, um, yeah, big time. And who doesn't love, love a towel? Rock 'em and sock 'em towel. Yeah. <laughs> nice. um, and oh, there's, there's a few antics shops um, around the place. There is actually um, mm. Morning Carl as well. Um, Oh, well, I spent 10 minutes telling uh, uh, yeah, bigger brushes. Uh, use whatever size brush you want. Don't do what someone tells you. But uh, it's always good. If you if you want to paint with a tiny brush and it means you paint your models better and you enjoy it more, use a tiny brush. No one gives a fuck. Um, you know, <laughs> this whole, like, oh, I painted this with a size 14. You know. Well, good for you, buddy. Um, right. What's up next? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Sorry. Uh, oh, <laughs> wow! Right. Very cool. This is very cool. This is why I love this hashtag. I would never have seen this in a million years. Would this have come up in my normal feed? Mm. Um, it's just cool. Mm. Very cool. Love very it. cool. Love but the lighting. It's, we've, yeah, because we've had this mm. this same miniature on a couple of times, I think, haven't we? And I still think mm -hmm. that big round head thing, when you get nice reflections yeah. in it, it just works. It's the bit, right? That's why you're buying the model. Yeah. You're going, yeah. right, I want to practice. I want to nail this. That's the model to do it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Very, 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 very she, cool. She must have the strongest neck. Yeah. It's future Maybe space, she's an alien. Space tech. It's really light. Uh, that old chestnut. Yeah. Uh, what's up next? Ah, this speaking of like when it's cold and wet out, and what do you want to paint? So yeah. you, you've heard me mention a few times this um, Conquest of Kings, this uh, game come out mm. come out a few a few years ago. My mind's gone blank now as to the manufacturer. Um, Conquest. And this is one of the earlier um, miniatures that came out for it. And the, the detail on them is good, right? They're plastic miniatures. That, well, most of them are. Some are resin. They're, they're, they're good. They're slightly larger than you, your Games Workshop models, maybe sort of 
35 mil ish something like that um but the idea is it's still a sort of rank and flank type type mm. game um but but you know the details good this person was saying they i think they were given it by a friend or they got it on ebay and it was like covered in two inches of enamel paint or whatever <laughs> So they gave it the old uh, isopropyl bath or whatever, and it started melting. Um, so they oh, no. the additional texture and a loss of texture, but they still painted it. It still looks super cool. I think this was painted for a friend, actually, if I remember reading right. Um, and I, I, I think I might have become a bit too precious in the last few years with with some of my models like if if i notice there's a bit of a mold line or a bit of whatever i go oh no, i'm not going to paint it now i'm looking for a reason <laughs> to quit on it do you know what i mean yeah. um i just i really admire like just person just seeing it through um and if they hadn't said that he'd never have known no yeah you have had, had no idea um but yeah it's a super cool super cool miniature it's a really cool range um i would really recommend going and checking it out if you're, if you're looking at companies who clearly give a damn and have invested in uh it's 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 really cracking game great mm. background great artwork and still going which is really encouraging um they, they were one of these unlucky ones to launch like in the middle of covid and everything so that it sort of stimmy right. stimmied that momentum for them but they, they've stuck at it and uh yeah I'm, I'm hoping to see a bit more of this down the local club um tempt me to jump in <laughs> um so what's up next oh yeah oh that's cool oh yeah big time hmm. it's also scary as fuck <laughs> i think she just got her eyes closed rich i don't i don't think they're purple pupils are they i don't know i think um, i think he's painted them as they're closed but they are yeah. sculpted open right right um this this we've featured this account quite a few times really enjoy mm. their work um this feels a lot like summing up 2022 um for me with like stuff we've spoken about often mm. um mm. you know that different style colors expression backdrops um blurring that line between miniature painting and art Mm. Uh, yeah absolutely there's it's very nice. there. it, it is art but you know um and it's, just, it's inspiring it's i just this this is it this is this is how you know sometimes you see stuff online and it's intimidating right mm. you go on you might look at something like mark's piece from earlier the woodsman uh woodcutter and it's incredible and you admire it but it can intimidate you can you almost demotivate you sometimes right yeah. you see yeah. it you see it in life with everything right you see people posting about their workout regime or their whatever you know and it makes you feel whatever and i think you see it a lot with painting but to me this does the opposite like this is a stop worrying gloves are off have fun throw paint. some paint around throw exactly throw some paint around and see see what you can do and i'm not saying this person has just thrown paint around <laughs> willy-nilly and and not put the effort in but it's that i'm really loving the the amount we're seeing now of this style of, mm. of freedom in painting sure. um, and just saying to people, it does not have to be heavy metal or the equivalent styles, yeah. right? Because there are the equivalent styles, aren't there? There's, you know, there's certain styles of NMM, there's certain ways of, of lighting and, and all the rest of it. Don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, really, really yeah, cool. He had a great display at Monty as well. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah it was really mm. cool to see in person. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Um, cool, man. I'd, I'd love to have this piece. I'd love to have that on the shelf. It's just cool. Mm. Um, right. I think there's a couple more. Like a couple I said, more. I think I did quite quite a bunch. <coughs> lovely. Lovely. That's lovely, very lovely, cool. Lovely, lovely. Why have we not seen more of the incredible crew guilty Fruit. box? That's a really good point. I think like, we've seen a couple of people do a couple of really yeah. good ones. Class did a but couple for us. And they were great, but he hasn't done the rest of them. And I haven't seen. I think it just kind of flew under the radar a little bit. Yeah. It, it, these these little skirmish games GW are doing, Warcry, Kill Team, you know, Necromunner, some of the miniatures that are getting produced are outrageously cool. And hmm. they exist in this tiny little niche corner that no one sees. It's criminal. 
yeah, everyone will, you know, it was going to be very rude then. Everyone will get terribly, <laughs> terribly excited about the uh, the latest Primaris Lieutenant or whatever. Oh, God, yeah. You know? um, it's, they're, they're on the list of things for me to do. I would love to do them at some point. They are. I, I think yours would look fab, mate. They are amazing. I mean, it's just such a iconic. Artists. Mid-September? Yeah. But yeah, I just think it, it just kind of it just kind of flew under the radar for some reason. Which I don't so, know why, because they're like amazing sculpts. They're amazing. I'm going to go and order, I'm gonna go and order some actually after this. They are, <laughs> I want the money. Every single one of them is like a character model. Yeah. Order crouped. What, what I love about them is... Oh, gone, Rich. I was just saying, I don't know what they're like in the game either. I know I look at it from a gamer kind of thing, yeah. but they are very. They always um, remind me of. Uh, do you ever, did you ever play uh, Abe's Odyssey? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I always, I always see that when I see crew. <laughs> I like seeing them with like a like a human skin tone, not mm. a not a green. Mm. That would right. look really cool. But it's just, <laughs> I, I love this paint job all day long. This is. Right. Mark up a tea. Um, cheeky little back, black background as well. Add a bit of atmosphere. Yeah. yeah Fucker. Great job. A um, couple more. Community page now. They actually got a, quite a big release, didn't they? Oh, a lot of miniatures. Yeah. It's weird. They just kind of. Hmm, yeah. Weird. All right. Next up is. Oh, nah, here he is. Speak, speaking of regular um, appearances, yeah. the, speaking of masters, yeah, I mean, for goodness sake. How uh, festive? I mean, it's festive too, yeah. I didn't even think of that. It, uh, How many mince pies have you eaten? Uh, blah, 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 what are we at? So, well, I had to have a few weeks off because of the tooth. Mm. Um, 60, 66. Oh. You've been six to six minutes prior. Jesus Christ! I hear man. a ton. I hear a ton by Crimbo. I said I've had a few weeks off. So, but um, but yeah, this uh, <laughs> yeah, Just go and follow. This. Go and fritters. follow this account. It's incredible. <laughs> um, it uh, yeah, and it's tiny I don't as well. <laughs> it's, it's so, so freaking small. <laughs> like, how long has it taken? Look at all the brush strokes. <laughs> Look at all the work that's gone into it. And it's smaller than... And uh, this is going to sound really dumb. It doesn't look like a particularly big thumb. <laughs> you know? It's not, like, an index not, finger. not like sausage, that, sausage fingers, you know? That did sound stupid. You are correct. <laughs> I, I think that's an index finger rather than a thumb. Oh, really? Well, that would be why then. Yeah. But the point is, it's teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, it is. And yeah, just just... I'm really, really happy I found this account whenever I found it. It's just, it's, it, it sounds such like a weird thing. It's just such a nice hobby. Oh, it, is. it just brings you joy, right? I mean, just, yeah. just nice. Pure joy. What's that one we found recently that did all the Lord of the Rings dioramas as well? Celebrimble uh, 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 Forge. Yes, Celebrimble Forge, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just, just happy, happy, happy. Um, so thank you for creating it and sharing it. But um, yeah, go and check it out. Um, one more? Two more. Two more. Goodness. Oh, uh -huh. from, one, from one amazing burp to the next. Critters, critters. Um, and I'm trying to think what the comment on this. It was something along the lines of, you know, when is it never a good time to paint, you know, a naughty looking budgie with a, you know, this. And it's true. Like, if you're ever, ever in, in doubt as to what to do, what to work on. Some really work on budgie. Bad this miniature. Tweety bird. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's just ah, oh, it's just cool. Is he holding a cutlass? Yeah, yeah, he's a pirate. He's a pirate, oh, obviously. Um, obviously, <laughs> but yeah, another great, another great account uh, we featured a few times before. Um, I think I like as well with this type of miniature. If it's not, if it's really not what you do, if you're like me and Rich and you paint a lot of GW, mm. painting uh, something like this is is. So, well, well, I say that, Matt, but you only paint like one once a year, and then you... no, I was just going to say uh, <laughs> Joshua's in the uh, the comments, and he oh, says his fingers are regular sized. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't suggesting they were small. 
I was not that that matters, but I would just, you know. <laughs> Weird comment, mate. Just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> back on the budget. Um, yeah, this type of miniature can give you an awful lot of freedom. Um, yeah. The, 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 the rules of painting Warhammer no longer apply. Um, True. When you can do something like this. So, yeah. Right. What is this last one then that I can't remember? Holy shit. Oh, uh, yeah. So, this was a cool account, right? Um, apparently, this is a very old piece of theirs, but I think they've added it to their account or something. Um, and it's that thing, isn't it, where someone's took a photo outside, right, mm. of the, what yeah, they've yeah, done. Yeah. Um, Love but again, that. Like, like you were saying then, Rich, it's just, it's just happy, right? It's just, yeah. it's, it's, as cool as all these other different weird ass takes on fantasy are, yeah. doesn't really get better than this for me. Like from a from a vibe, um, you know, want to live in that house. That's it, right? This is this is where you escape to uh, in, in 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 your mind. Well, the idealistic version of this, anyway. Um, before Geralt runs from off the camera right and kicks you in the ball. Yeah, <laughs> um, or, you, or you die of cholera. But, in yeah, exactly minutes. right. But don't think about that. Just think about the nice don't past the, the nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um So yeah, nice bit of nice bit. Of, I don't know. I wonder if it's that. Was it a Polish company made the amazing resin fantasy buildings? Oh, they're great. Maybe it's them. I don't know. Um, doesn't really matter. I can't remember their name anyway. So, <laughs> um, but cool. So yeah, there's just a tiny snapshot uh, of what's come up in the last few weeks on there. So, anything to add, chaps? We'll close it out there. Happy. No, just We're good uh, to go. Support you favorite creators basically support, yeah support your local hobby shops yeah support your favorite creators it means a lot yeah it does it means an awful lot um so i hope you've all enjoyed the show thanks as ever chat for joining us live and all the questions that's awesome um was really worried you might disappear because we'd, we'd been gone for a month but we're back we're back on regular don't worry um we've got plenty coming over the next uh, month or so over, over that weird especially that weird you know, nether zone between Christmas and New Year and all the rest of it. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, to all the usual channels, all the usual social medias, emails, everything, it's probably Cult of Paint something or at Cult of Paint. Uh, if you've got ideas, topics for future shows or accounts memes. that you think we need to take a look at or memes, send directly to Rich. Uh, his, his Instagram is in the description. Again, all the accounts we featured will be down in the description as well. Uh, if you're watching this back on YouTube, thanks ever so much. You know the usual. Hit the like, subscribe, all the rest of it. Chaps, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, and chat, you're the best. Take care. We'll see you next time.